Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to import your CC3 character into the Unity game engine. We'll talk mostly about the materials in this tutorial, and we'll focus on other aspects later on in the series. On the screen you can see a beautiful elf character, which is the end result of our import. This character contains PBR textures, which were imported in from CC3 and assigned to the corresponding channels in Unity. So let's dig right into it first by exporting our character in FBX format from CC3. Although you can also set your shader type to traditional in CC3, generally your characters will be set to the PBR shader type. For example, if we take a look at this piece of chest armor, you can see that the shader type is set to PBR, and it contains the telltale metallic and roughness maps, as well as others such as displacement, AO, and so on. In the materials tab, you'll be able to see a list of all the materials contained within your selected object. Here you can see we have four that are named Quiver. However, you'll also notice that only one of the mesh names is called Quiver, while the others are all called Arrow. Since this can cause some confusion when importing into Unity, let's go to the C Manager, ensure that we have the actual Quiver accessory selected, and then go back to the Material tab and rename it to Quiver underscore Quiver in order to differentiate it from the other meshes. The next thing you want to make sure you do is ensure that your character is in a T-pose, and that the T-pose is at the top of the list of all the motions that you wish to export with your FBX. To ensure that this is first in line, right-click on the actual pose in the content library, then select Find File. From there you can rename it with a zero in front of the file name. So let's go ahead and export by going up to File and Export FBX. Very important here is that you set the target tool preset to Unity 3D, and make sure you deactivate the Embed Texture box. In the motion list, you can have as many motions embedded into the FBX as you want, but as mentioned earlier, make sure that the T-Pose is at the top of the list. You can move this up with the Move Up button. You can add in more motions by using the Load Motions button as well. You don't need to activate the Delete Hidden Mesh box, but it's recommended in most cases in order to reduce the resources taken up by your character in the game engine. From here, let's just go ahead and export. Just a heads up that you won't be able to import your character back into CC3 in its current form due to the fact that you're changing the mesh by deleting the hidden mesh. We'll just save it as Elf Warrior for now and continue. After export is completed, you'll find your textures are all exported into the texture folder, and the normal and displacement maps can be found in the FBM folder of the same name. Let's go into Unity now. You'll want to make sure that you're using the 2018.2 version for now, However, we're currently working on compatibility for 2018.3 beta and later versions. We'll call our project warrior underscore setting and make sure we're using the 3D preset for our scene since we're importing in a 3D character. Once you're in Unity, you'll want to make sure that you download a handy little script that we prepared for you that automates the import so you don't need to mess around with optimizing the textures. The link for the download is in the description of this video. Simply click and drag it into your assets and then click import. Once you've done that, you'll see two separate folders appear, the CC Assets folder and a folder called Editor. You'll also notice that a command has now been added under the Windows File menu item called Auto Processing for CC Character. In the Editor folder, you'll find a DLL file that contains the script for the auto settings. In the CC Assets folder, you'll find a simple README file that tells you that this is the folder where you want to import all of your character's FBX assets. What you want to do from here is import the entire folder containing your FBX file, the textures folder, as well as the .fbm folder into that CC Assets folder in your Unity library. Once the import is complete, you'll see that more folders have been auto-generated. A Materials folder, a Prefabs folder, and also an Animator controller named after your FBX. All you need to do now is import the Prefab into your scene and voila! You have a complete character with all of the materials already applied in the correct fashion. Let's take a closer look at the materials now to see what happened. In the materials folder, you'll see all the character's materials, which are auto-connected to the appropriate parts of the character via the script that you downloaded. Keep in mind that the emission box must be manually activated if you have a glow texture applied from Character Creator. Here's a quick comparison chart that shows you which textures from CC correspond with which maps in Unity. The base color and opacity maps will be combined into the albedo map, and the bump from CC will be set as a normal map. The metallic and roughness maps will be combined into Unity's metallic map, 
and AO from CC will be set to the occlusion map in Unity. Finally, your glow map will be set to emission. If your character used traditional shader mode in CC, then it will be slightly different and set to a special specular shader. Diffuse and opacity will still be assigned to the albedo map in Unity, with bump also being set to the normal map, and specular will be directly set to specular in Unity as well. Here's an image to show how the glow effect is translated into Unity once you've enabled emission. Let's take a closer look at the model now and see if we can't optimize the materials further. One thing to keep in mind when importing your character is to ensure that the shading mode is correct for each individual element. One thing you'll likely want to change is the shading mode for your character's hair. Here you can see that it's currently set to opaque, which generally won't get you the most accurate results for hair. Unity has a couple of different shader modes that can be suitable for hair based on your unique character. However, in this case, we can simply set the shader type to fade. Fade will allow transparency values to entirely fade an object out, including any specular highlights or reflections it may have. You can see a better example of this when we look at the character's overskirt. If we set that to fade instead of opaque, you'll see a better semi-transparent effect on the object. Another problem you may encounter is some materials will only be one-sided, like this cape on the character. In order to resolve this, you can check out this free double-sided shader from Sisonia Studio on the Unity Asset Store. Simply import it into your project, and once that's finished, you can select that shader from the shader menu, the same way that we just did with the hair. There are a few more options here, but in this case you'll want to select the standard diffuse bump. Once you've selected that, right away you'll be able to see both sides of our beautiful cape. If you want to edit the materials of the cloak further, we can twirl down the shader to see the properties. Here there are parameters such as specular intensity, glossiness, and normal intensity that you can mess around with to achieve the desired effect. Now that we've downloaded that double-sided shader from Sisonia Studios, we can also adjust the mesh of our character's skirt object even further. If we select Diffuse Bump Cutout from the Transparent submenu, you'll see that the result here will be a lot less transparent, which may not be ideal in this case. So what we'll want to do is select Diffuse Bump 2, which will present a much more accurate result. Naturally, you can manually edit all aspects of your imported FBX as well, simply by clicking on it in the library. You'll see all the aspects of the model that you can customize up here in the inspector, including the model, rig, animation, and material parameters. If we wanted to apply our own material to any part of our character, First, what we'll need to do is right-click in the library and create new material from there. If you want to manually apply materials to your character, it's important that you deactivate the auto-processing script from the window menu at the top. Make sure that it's deselected before dragging your material to the mesh that you want to apply it to, and then select Apply. Once it's applied, we can import another copy of our FBX, and you'll see our blank material has been applied to the cake. From here, we can do things like edit the albedo color, adjust the shader type again, and so on and so forth. So that's the basics of importing your FBX characters from Character Creator into Unity, made super easy thanks to the script freely available in the description of this video that applies everything to the right place so you don't have to. Thanks for watching guys, and make sure that you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.